I'm Rocky Mullet. I made 2D pixel art games in Unreal Engine. Since my YouTube channel just turned 1 year old, I decided to look back at all the games I've been doing since I started making online game jams. I made a bunch of them. So here's all the games since I started doing this. As I was learning Unreal, I bumped into videos of the Vim Jam. I was hyped by the idea of online game jams, since I was used to make RL game jams with a theme. So I joined the 8-bit to infinity community with a jam coming up, the physics jam. I didn't start to learn pixel art yet, and as a programmer, I'm actually more used to working in 3D. I made procedural water that would react to things falling in the water, with a boat that can navigate on it and jump on waves. The theme was Switch. So I made it so that the game would switch from a good side to a bad side, having the boat moving on both sides of the water. It was a very cool technical challenge, but in all of this, I didn't focus on what really matters, making a good game. It was more of a tech demo that I forced the game into. I finished 18 out of only 24 entries. I was penalized for the low amount of ratings, making me realize the importance of hyping your game even for a game jam. My first pixel art game. Since pixel art was what I actually wanted to make, I spent the two months before the jam learning pixel art. I didn't want to remake the same mistake, so instead of challenging something I'm good at, aka programming, I would challenge myself on level design and my modest new art skills. It was the first time I made a schedule to be sure to not go off track. I knew I wanted to make a puzzle game, since they are usually simple to code, leaving more time for the harder part being level design and art since I'm new to it. The limitation was mundane and the theme was decay. So I went for a farm setting where you would play sentient vegetables that would sacrifice themselves to make plants grow. Having to think where and when you would use all your vegetables with three variations, a tomato that can only walk but sneak in small spaces, a carrot that can jump, and a squash that is big enough to be used as a platform. My efforts paid off. Super cute! And I actually ranked first in that jam, which is obviously a huge leap from the previous one. Oh my god, I love this carrot! I just wanna hug it and tell it that everything's gonna be fine. Blast Bash. I made that game for the Nate Jam. I wanted to challenge my pixel art animation skills and make a walking humanoid as a playable character. The theme was Break the System, so I made a kind of beat em up where the player needs to slap remote trigger mines on robots to make them all explode at the same time without blowing yourself up. It was the first time I would make a game with a clear beginning and an end. To have more dialogue without interrupting the gameplay, I made speech bubbles that would end up being in a lot of my following games. I placed third out of 82 entries. <laughs> nice. I learned a lot about pixel art, animation, and making a 2D game in a more top-down perspective, which is not very easy to do in Unreal Engine. Okay. E. Oh, I love that. Then came in my biggest challenge, Tough Fluff. My interest for Vim Jam is what made me want to start online game jams, so I was determined to go try hard for Vim Jam 2. Thank you for the bounce pads. I treated that jam as an improvement check, to see what kind of game I can make if I really try. The theme was on the edge, with a restriction of boss. So I made a character that is on edge and needs his pet bunny to calm down but the bunny is kidnapped by a power harvesting demon who's after the power of fluffiness. My biggest challenge was making a character made out of two different sprites to make hate direction aiming with the upper body. I learned a lot about being efficient with pixel art but also with level design, planning all the interaction with the boss, the different arenas, level triggers and cutscenes. I ranked third out of 412 entries and second in fun and design. That was super, super cool. I was really surprised and happy about the result. I knew I had a decent game on my hands, 
but to finish third as a solo dev against so many others, against so many teams of like 5 people, was unbelievable. Ah oh, yes! Yes! The power of the floof! My success with Vimjan 2 is what made me think that I might have something worth talking about on YouTube. Making games is great, but not as much if nobody knows they exist and nobody plays them. I wanted to make a devlog about Tough Love, but didn't want to waste my idea on my first video, assuming it would be poorly made because it would be my first video. I made a simple top-down 2D game before making Blast Bash to practice 2D top-down in Unreal. This game was long abandoned, so I didn't mind wasting the idea on a bad video, and I thought that maybe people would be interested in top-down 2D in Unreal Engine. And that was an understatement. To this day, my first video is still consistently my most watched video, every day since the beginning of my channel. <laughs> people are hungry for some top-down 2D in Unreal Engine. Fast for the Zender Jam 6. After finally making my devlog for Tough Love, I was hungry for more game jam. Tough Love made me see what I could do if I tried applying what I already knew, so it was time to get out of my comfort zone. So I wanted to make animation based movement like the retro cinematic platformers and a narrative game with a limited color palette on top of that. A game that put emphasis on mood and a narratively driven build-up leading to a climax. I placed 4 out of 16 entries, which I wasn't very satisfied with. The main reason being the jump animation would create a delay on the jump, making the jumps very hard for a new player, making people quit the game before they could experience the story. Something I would have known for sure if I asked for any playtesting. Quickly after the jam, I fixed the jump issue and added checkpoints, making the game a lot easier. I think that's actually the version the judges played, and both of them chose me as the judge pick for the jam. It's a game I wasn't sure about in the first place, and it ended up being one of my favorite games of mine. I learned a lot about jump animations, narration, and most of all, the importance of playtesting. And since it's a narrative game, I later fully translated a game in French as a learning experience. I was bored during the spring and couldn't find a good game jam. Influenced by other game dev YouTubers, I decided to challenge myself to make a game in 48 non-consecutive hours. Since my viewers were apparently thirsty for top-down 2D in Unreal, I made a top-down 2D game. My theme given by Ben Brooks was correction. So I made a game about an out-of-touch mayor trying to tweet for the re-election campaign. The player would pick branching dialogues that would end up being auto-corrected for something that would make people on Twitter angry, leading to fighting hordes of angry citizens. It's a light and goofy game and I learned a lot about planning with a fixed time pool, forcing me to scope appropriately. After my success with Vim Jam 2, I wanted to try an even bigger jam. And in terms of week-long jams, there's nothing bigger than Bracky's Game Jam. I love Hollow Knight, so I made an action platformer with directional attacks, pogo jumping, 8 levels, 5 enemy archetypes, a complete boss fight and a story progressing through the game. I also made procedural grass waving in the wind, which I think is pretty cool. I ranked 33rd out of more than 1000 entries, including 11th in the fun category. I wish I would have ranked higher, but I bombed in innovation and theme, which is fair. I did make a game heavily influenced by Hollow Knight, and what was the theme of the jam again? I really liked the game I ended up making though, and I might re-explore those mechanics in future games.
Xanderwood was challenging other game dev YouTubers to remake each other's game in their respective engines. He makes 2D games in Constructory, and since I'm one of the few people who made a questionable choice of making 2D games in Unreal, he challenged me. I remade his game Hookshot Hero with what ended up being more of a grappling hook. The player swings around levels, gathering resources to craft items and bridges to progress in the game. It was a fun experience to take someone else's ID, analyze it and remake it, learning from their mistakes. I made a shop, 7 levels, a boss fight, a world map and a fully playable tutorial. And without a fixed deadline, it allowed me to make a game slightly bigger in scope than I usually make in game jams. Maximum concentration on. Yes. Did I just do it? Did I get him? <laughs> I love it. What a cool end screen. I love the little crying tear there. That is awesome. Well done. Hats off. Can't believe I completed it. I'm really happy to see what I could achieve this year. I've been programming games for some time, but I was able to see what I could create on my own, making games that are truly mine. Making pixel art, animation, game design, and even a bit of narrative design. I'm definitely going to keep doing it next year. Maybe something bigger than a Game Jam game? We'll see. See you next year!